Hi everyone, in this lecture I'm going to introduce you to SQL. Structured Query Language or SQL for short is a special purpose query language which is used to manipulate sets of data. Now data is anything that you interact with uh, from text to images to videos everything is data and we have talked about different data types in Python so whenever we talk about SQL manipulating sets of data that is the kind of data that we want to talk about so the data which is in the textual format in the integer format or numeric format and all, all the other types so a database is really just a name that we give a container that helps us organize data in, a, in some logical way. Now, by organizing that data in a logical way, we basically have a much more efficient way of sorting the data and retrieving the data. So sometimes in an enterprise, data will be stored in a spreadsheet and there is some commonality between spreadsheets and databases. Spreadsheets contain rows and columns. Database tables also store data in rows and columns. But you would not create a database just for data in one spreadsheet. Think of a database as containing the data that might be contained in say 1000 or like 10,000 spreadsheets. So SQL manipulates sets of data. Sets of data they're stored within a database. Now whenever you store data within a database you need some sort of an environment to work with that data to store it and you need some sort of standard or specification to be able to manipulate that data. Now in this course, we just we are just going to go over SQL, all the parts from 0 to 100%, and I'm going to walk you through all the chapters, all the necessary and essential topics of SQL. In this chapter, we are going to introduce SQL, and I'm going to show you how you can install a GUI application or a GUI workbench, a gra graphical user interface workbench that allows us to write SQL. Now, I just want to clarify some stuff right at the beginning that um, whenever you you want to work with with any kind of technology that technology requires an environment now you want to work with python python requires an environment so far we have worked with python in the vs code environment the environment provides us with these sets of tools that allows us to write the specification or the standards for that specific technology that we want to work with and to get something out of it. Now, keep that in mind. The final product is something that we want to get out of it. Now, uh, there are other uh, environments that Python can work in as well. One is Google Collaboratory or Collab. The other one is Jupyter Notebooks, which we are going to take a look at. Uh, we, you could, there are like PyCharm and other code editors and IDs as well. So far, we have just talked about um, running Python in VS Code and in Terminal. Now, the same goes for SQL. SQL is used to manipulate sets of, sets of data. Now, you cannot write SQL like on the thin air, right? You need some sort of an environment. Now, that environment is, uh, might be different. You might have uh, a software like uh, MySQL. You might, have, you might have a different environment like Oracle, which we're not going to get into. And this SQL, as opposed to Python, is going to be a little bit different. So the SQL that you write in MySQL is going to be a little bit like like maybe like 10% or 5% different than the SQL that you write for Oracle. The specification is the same, but the implementation is going to be a little bit different. That is not something that I want to get into. I just, I'm just trying to get you, get your, uh, um, I'm just trying to give you this idea how SQL actually works. So you can think of SQL as any other programming language like Python, JavaScript, or any other that requires an environment. The environment that we are going to take a look at first is going to be MySQL. We are going to take a look at SQLite and uh, SQL Alchemy. We are going to take a look at Postgres as well, those environments, and I'm going to show you how you can work with those as well, because as I told you, this is going to be like a complete SQL course embedded within the Python course. So this is the first course that we uh, 
um, go over within this Python course. This is going to be the first one. And um, what else? Let me um, think. So, uh, so far, uh, now, whenever we install that MySQL, MySQL is going to have a workbench that, that is going to allow us or give us an environment in which we are going to write SQL code. Now, that SQL code is going to be used to either uh, retrieve data or like um, create new data and all kind of things that you can think about. And that SQL um, commands, the SQL commands or the SQL code, they're going to work with against the database. I have created a database for this course beforehand, and I'm going to share that with you. The data is, of course, all of them is dummy. That is just for demonstration purposes. The name of the database is Halali underscore DB. You already have access to it. And we and there is like a lot of tables. So within a database, we have tables. Within the tables, we have rows and columns. Now, table is the closest thing resembling an Excel software or a spreadsheet application. A database should contain data that relates to a whole, let's say, now let's talk about database in, in a more real world kind of scenario. Now, in the, in the real world kind of scenario, a database should contain data that relates to a whole part of a specific business. For example, you might want to create a finance database, an HR database, a commerce database, whatever the logical split is for your particular business, you're going to have a database for each of those things. And there is a lot of other considerations that go into how to design and sp spread out data across the database, which I'm not going to get into in this particular course, because that is way beyond the scope of this course database modeling and design. That's a highly advanced topic. Now, the idea is that we want to put data in a database in such a way that makes it the one source of data and makes it easy to query data. You're going to hear me say query data or query a lot. Querying data basically means that we want to retrieve data. We want to get data. We want to add new data. For example, we want to delete old data, old and used data, or we want to update some data. So this, these, these, everything that we have talked about so far, this is the basic idea behind a database. And uh, starting our next lecture, um, I'm going to introduce you to the relational model. Now, SQL is a relational database. Um, we have many different types of database. Um, we have SQL, which is relational. We have no SQL, which is uh, non-relational. We have graph database. We have key value database like Redis. Now, um, you, uh, one more thing about the SQL keyword itself. Some people would like to say it is SQL. You're going to hear SQL. You're going to hear SQL. Both ways is actually correct. You can say SQL. You can say SQL. It doesn't really matter. You can say data or you can say data. You can say database. You can say database. Both ways are correct. I myself, I prefer saying data. I think that, uh, that has a better ring to it. You can say database. Both ways are correct, and you're going to hear uh, whenever you get to like real-world stuff, stuff you're going to hear these terms both ways. It is very important for you to know that both of the terms actually refer to the same technology. So you can say MySQL, or you can say MySQL. You can say SQLite, which we have talked about before, or you can say SQLite. You can say Postgres or you can say Postgres SQL and something like that. So it doesn't really matter if you hear it both ways. Both ways is correct. And um, with this, our lecture comes to an end. In the next lecture, I'm going to introduce you to this concept of, to this idea of relational model. And the next lecture will be the installation of the MySQL on Windows machines. So see you in the next lecture.